In this video I am going to uh, show you how to make a soda pop can stove. This stove runs on uh, alcohol. There are a number of other fu fuels that it can run on. I use high grade denatured alcohol. It leaves less residue. Uh, seems to burn longer than things like heat um, or other oils or uh, fluids. <clears throat> There's a lot of sanding that goes into this. It's probably the most time-consuming part. You don't have to sand um, both of the cans, but I prefer to do so. The outer can can be left unsanded, but uh, there is a slight chance that that coating will catch on fire or uh, will melt and release noxious fumes that uh, you don't want released into your food or, or into the air as you're cooking over it. I prefer to sand both of the cans uh, horizontally. I will uh, usually sand them, uh, sand the first one vertically and then horizontally um, with uh, the first one being the outer layer. The inner layer I only want sanded horizontally. That will uh, trap the uh, alcohol fumes and liquid inside a little better. Um, to sand off as much as you can. You can do this with a Dremel tool with a brass wire uh, bit on it or something like that. I've done it that way as well. Um, just measure it and make sure you know how high up you want to go. I usually uh, go a little higher than a 2x4, the, the uh, thin width of a 2x4 because that's uh, the height I like it to be at. Mine come out to about an inch and a half tall. Some people prefer them a little shorter than that. Um, that that height has seemed to work for me. Now I need to take the uh, exterior can, which will be the top, and before... well, no, let's see. Here I'm cutting... I'm going to cut the uh, interior can, which will be the bottom. You're going to attach a razor blade to the top of a 2x4. They have uh, the notches in the back. Just put, an, put the nail in one of those notches with the blade coming out at about a 90 degree angle. Um, you don't want the blade pointing in towards where the can's going to be cut. Um, otherwise it's going to dig into the can and not uh, score it as easily. You want it to cut in a, in a very nice, even manner. I take a second nail and I'll put it in front of the blade but not where I'm going to ruin that front tip in case I want to turn the blade around uh, to use it again. Uh, and it'll keep the blade from, from rotating. Um, you notice I had it turned a little so the nail could go in and then it would, it would stop it. Press both the board and the uh, can down pretty firmly and just start rotating in towards the blade without putting too much pressure on it on the against the can you want to put a little bit of pressure you're gonna rotate maybe 30 times to get it scored properly once uh, the blade starts digging into it even though you're putting a little bit of pressure it'll dig in to a number of areas all the way around and you'll notice that it's about ready and you can just go and pop it a pop it apart. Um, I had a little bit of a tough area here, but you usually don't run into those. Um, but you want that as smooth as possible. I take off any burrs, though uh, sanding it down real well isn't so important. That, that edge will be uh, inside. Here I'm going to cut out a little shim. This can be used to uh, fit the two pieces of can together. Since they are the same diameter, fitting them together can be a little bit difficult uh, to get it just right without the outside can splitting, without the inside can uh, being uh, crimped too much. You want them to fit together as smoothly as possible. So I just cut this shim off and I'll smooth it out here with a hammer. Um, it usually does the trick. All right, now I'm sharpening up a very fine nail. Some people like to use a thumbtack uh, 
to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to pick a spot on on the uh, exterior of the ridge of the can in that little V, that little trough on the the outside. Some people like to do it on the inside, but if you do it on the outside, uh, um, it allows a little bit uh, more flow, in my opinion. Then you're going to pick a spot exactly opposite that first one, that first hole, and put a second hole. And then you'll put a hole in between those two, and then one on the other side as well, until you get up to about 16 holes. So uh, you're going to go and then you put in a center hole with a larger nail and four smaller holes around it uh, in the very center. That's where you're going to fill the stove with alcohol. So I've got 16 holes all the way around and then the uh, larger hole in the center and the four smaller holes around it and you cut this one off. You usually want to punch those holes before you cut it otherwise you're going to deal with that can wanting to bend a lot as you're punching the holes. Again, you're going to rotate about 30 times. Your wife may or may not walk through the, the image. Uh, I'm lucky to have her around. <laughs> All right, so the two pieces are done. You're going to want to get dry it out and get a piece of, uh, piece of like attic insulation, fiberglass insulation, small piece that fits in there. Um, and you're going to put that in the bottom side. Uh, but uh, I usually take a full can of soda and will stretch out the top side. Um, be careful not to get it stuck in there too, too tightly. You only want to stretch out that top edge so that you can get the two to fit together. Here you can see that fiberglass insulation inside the, uh, inside the bottom can. It can take a little doing to get them together. Sometimes when they won't fit, I've got to restretch it, and then I'll even uh, take a pair of needle nose pliers and the inner can. You can uh, just bend the top quarter inch or so, put a little bend in it all the way around. Just tiny little bends and it'll make it so that you can fit it inside and push it together and it'll still get a good seal for uh, about three quarters of an inch to an inch there and that will be plenty. Um, so I just uh, cut that a little so I could go all the way around for you there. So pop it together you can see there's a little indentation, but we'll take care of that. Um, you don't want too many of those because you do want a good seal. Run the shim all the way around, making sure everything fits together. Take a bit of hanger and you can pop those indentations back out. You don't want to push a hole through with the hanger. So you keep your finger on the other side and feel the amount of pressure that you're pushing against it. Once that's all done, get it set together. And you're going to want to flatten it out so the top is good and flat. I usually put a board on top of it. And then uh, put the board on top and tap it down a little bit until it's uh, even across the bottom. Now I'm sanding that bottom ridge. You want to sand it actually towards the other can which cre creates an even better seal. Go all the way around and, and do that. All right, we're looking at 12 grams. That's a stove weighing 12 grams. I'm putting some denatured alcohol in it, uh, a little bit that I had left over from, uh, from a flask that I marked with a skull and crossbones. Um, there's not too much, so it when you have more in there, it will really get the stove going, but you can see a little bit how the stove gets going. You have to preheat it by 
running a lighter along the side or or using a preheater that I'll show you uh, in a future video here. All right, let's get the light turned off here and you can see how this gets going. It's really pretty amazing. These little stoves. I I've used these stoves for a while now and uh, it'll usually boil um, a pint of water uh, in about five minutes. Under perfect conditions I've got I've gotten it to uh, boil in about three minutes for a pint um, and it is hot. <laughs> I don't know why I always have to test it. I need my sign but uh, there you go that'll run for a good long time um, you put an ounce of ounce of fuel in there and you're gonna have that running uh, that'll boil two pints of water a, a good uh, quart of water no problem if you swap the pot quickly enough it'll probably run for maybe 15 minutes